Armando Hasudangan biology and medicine videos, uh, please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group. For the latest videos, visit Facebook Armando Hasudungan. Uh, make sure to like. And here you can also ask questions, answer questions, uh, and please post some interesting things such as your artworks. And you can change the quality settings to the highest one for better graphics of these videos. And so these videos is on uh, membrane lipids, so cell membrane itself. So let's just look over the cell uh, and the organelles and structures within it. So here we have uh, the nucleus where the DNA is stored. We have the rough endoplasmic reticulum around the nucleus. We have mitochondria, uh, the smooth uh, endoplasmic reticulum with the ribosomes. We have the Golgi apparatus, lysosome, and we are concentrating on this part, which are the membrane lipids. So if we zoom into the structure here, a typical lipid membrane, cell membrane, what, what role does it have in the cell? So here we have the typical uh, cell membrane. We have the extracellular fluid, the outside of the cell, and we have the intracellular fluid, the inside, the cytoplasm. Now a typical cell membrane is about 6 to 10 nanometers thick. A typical cell membrane also consists of proteins and lipids. So here's a protein and here's a lipid. And also actually carbohydrate chains or mono, monosaccharides are linked to the proteins and or fats itself. And they have a special role. Now the protein structures, they actually have a special function or role within the cell, such as being a receptor, for example. So let's look more closely uh, on the functions and the roles uh, cell membranes have. And this can be on the outside or the organelle's membrane itself, remember. Membranes are, there's a wide variety. So, five points. Number one, cell membrane uh, defines cellular boundaries. So, the statement is obvious, it just defines the boundaries. So it protects the cell, you can say. Two, it provides intracellular boundaries. So organelles have boundaries, such as a nucleus with the DNA or mitochondria. Now three, it can organize complex reactions, such as the receptors, ion channels, for example. Four, it can regulate flow of information. So it can send out signals as cytokines and communicate with other cells, receptors, etc. And lastly, five, they have dynamic structures, and we'll talk about these later on. But for now, let's zoom into the cell membrane. The cell membrane, the plasma membrane, is a bilayer, which means it has two layers, and it's a plane of sheet, so it's continuous, like this lipid membrane. And we'll talk more about the lipid uh, bilayer more um, later on and the evidence that proves that the membrane is a bilayer. But for now, let's look at one of these lipid uh, molecules that form the, uh, the, the membrane lipid structure. And you can say that the shape of it is cylindrical, surface area, and it's also ampipathic. What does this mean? It means that one side of the lipid loves water and the other side hates water. And this structure enables it to form a bilayer spontaneously, if you know what I mean. And the membrane are actually self-forming itself. So what does this mean? Let's look at an example, at a normal lipid structure. A normal lipid structure contains a carboxyl end and a long fatty acid chain. The carboxyl end is hydrophilic, you can say. It loves water. And the chain, hydrocarbon chain, or the alkyl chain, hates water, hydrophobic. So what happens if you put this in a solution of water where water molecules reside? Well, the water molecules will start surrounding the hydrocarbon chain and will not form bonds with it because it's hydrophobic. Right? Okay, so essentially water molecules will form cages around the hydrophobic alkyl chain of the fatty acid. because it can't interact. So it will just form cages. So for example, if we have two lipids, two lipids in solution, the water molecules will surround it, will cage it like so. 
and will not form bonds with it because the alkyl group is hydrophobic. And this means that the lipid molecule, the fatty, the, the hydrocarbon chain, will, will force water molecules to become highly ordered. So it uses energy. So what happens if we combine these two lipid uh, together to form cluster of lipid molecules? Well, this means that uh, the water, fewer water molecules are ordered and therefore entropy increases because the water will now, uh, only part of the water will surround uh, the lipid structure and will not be in the middle because the lipid will prevent this. So now if we have many clusters of lipid molecules like so, and we basically connect them up all together, it will form this sort of shape where all the hydrophobic regions, uh, regions that hate water, will be inside and all the hydrophilic regions will be outside, forming uh, what's called a micelle. And the hydrophobic groups are together and the water molecules are minimized. So entropy is increased. So looking at one of these structures, this is a cone looking structure, not like the previous cylindrical structure, if you remember. And the cylindrical stru structure is from the bilayer, the membrane bilayer. And the difference is that the cone consists only of one uh, tail, right? But the bilayer consists typically of two tails, and it's cylindrical. And this is what forms the bilayer. And if we put all the bilayers together, it will form, a, and if we form a circle out of it, it can form a vesicle. So all the hydrophilic regions aiming towards the water region and all the hydrophobic regions in the inside. And this inner circle is aqueous solution, so it consists of water. And so perhaps organelles can be in here, forming what's called a cell. So going back now to the cell diagram, we will zoom into the plasma membrane here. Now the plasma membrane, we are looking at what's called the fluid mosaic model. Now what is a fluid mosaic model? Now it's a basic model for the structure, uh, structures within the plasma membrane. And so now let us look at some typical structures and features of a typical plasma membrane of a cell. Here's a cytosol and extracellular fluid. Now the first important structure I'd like to talk about are these red things, which are sterols. And it's important for the membrane, such as cholesterol. And we'll look um, w at why this is important later on. Of course, this is a bilayer, as mentioned. An important component of the membrane um, also are the proteins, such as the peripheral protein, this structure here, which faces into the cytosol. And there's also another protein, peripheral protein, but this one is lipid linked, as you can see, it's connected with the lipid. Another protein that goes through the membrane is what's called the integral protein. And this integral protein is a single transmembrane helix, which means that it's a single helix here. And the helix is hydrophobic, and the outer parts are hydrophilic. We also have glycoproteins and glycolipids, which are carbohydrates attached to proteins and lipids. So that's all we're going to talk about on the fluid mosaic model, and we'll look at each of these structures more closely later on um, throughout this series. But for now, let's look at um, the structures within the inner leaflet of the cell membrane. So in the cytoplasm, the inner leaf leaflet of the membrane. And we're looking at a specific cell called an erythrocyte, which is a red blood cell. And erythrocytes contain ion channels, which control uh, the movement of ions in and out of the cell, for example. And here's an ion channel. So this cell, let's just say, we are bending it and we're looking at the inner leaflet of the membrane, so the inside, and I'm trying to depict it here. So the inner leaflet of the mem membrane contains structures such as actin, which is a protein and helps in maintaining the cell shape. Also, the inner leaflet and the cytoplasm contains things called cytoskeletons, which restrict motion. And a particular cytoskeleton in erythrocytes are called spectrons, which help in membrane flexibility, in this membrane flexibility. And that concludes part one of the cell membrane video series. Um, next video, we'll look at what evidence there is to support the fluid mosaic model. 
as well as other features of uh, the, the cell membrane. So please watch part two. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.